G'day guys, tonight uh, we've got an absolute beauty for you. We've got Hitachi's battery pneumatic, I think they're classifying it as. Battery pneumatic, cordless framing gun, really, really sweet unit. 50 to 90 mil capacity, as per standard framing gun as far as I'm concerned. Yep. Uh, model number is, he reads better. And uh, 1890 DBCL. Yep. So 18 for 18 volt, 90 for up to 90 mil nails. Yep. Um, pneumatic, not in the sense that you plug a lead into it, but in the sense that it runs on compressed air inside. Yep, which you'll see it in action right about now. I'm going to flick it across now to bump fire. This is nice hard red gum. So I'll change it back to single fire. You can certainly feel it kicking back a bit. But it's uh, it's doing it. So on the angle, sometimes guns, just depending on the angle you uh, you shoot in it, play up a little bit. So throughout the test, that's a little bit proud, but you can saw the angle I was on. Throughout the test, we're also going to do some above head on the angle into corners. So I think it makes a difference. So far out of the bat guys, this is seriously hard red gum. There's one up, one a tiny bit up, a couple of these a tiny bit up, but that's me not putting proper pressure on it as well. But this, I wish I had a density meter. It's, man it's hard stuff. Alrighty, so there's quite a few different applications you'll have noticed that I've used it in. Made sure we've done some really hard stuff, the red gum, just in a workshop test. Because it's important you guys are laminating LVLs, you're using um, hardwoods, yep. uh, that's important. Also above the head because sometimes you have to depress them really hard to actually get safeties to work, so that was important. Yep. Uh, and then I took it on site uh, with a guy called Jason um, and gave him a crack to see what he thought about it up on the roof. And uh, you tell me that he was down at the local tool store a couple of hours later buying his yeah. own. <laughs> yeah, dropped it off, I did a bit of filming there and then left it with him and said, oh, I'll leave it with you for the day. Uh, after a couple of hours, he was already cursing me. He reckons I'd cost him some money because he said, I'm going to have to go and buy one. He was that impressed, guys. Uh, at that stage, he was running his Bosch on the air leaf, but he had two DeWalt's uh, that were in for service, in a repair, at that stage. So he was that impressed with it that, yeah, I think three hours he lasted, and he hooked down to, uh, to a store and sent me a photo saying, you're a mongrel, I've just had to buy one. So well, I think that's a pretty good recommendation. That is a pretty good recommendation, for yeah. sure. Now, um, the, a lot of people are going to care about the weight. They're going to be asking about weight because yeah, the battery nails tend to be yep. heavier than and gas. That's the first thing that came up, questions, yeah. on Facebook, Instagram, on our accounts. What's the weight like though? And everyone was chatting backwards and forwards. I think it's about 4.8 kilos. With a battery? With a battery. So it's just under 5 kegs. 
which again, straight away, people go, oh, what's that like compared to the Pazload? I think the Pazload's about three and a half okay. with a battery in. It's a bit more. So it is a bit more weight. Again, in saying that, as soon as I rolled up to site with Jason, wasn't even a squabble because with a, an air, you're dragging around the lead anyway. Yeah. He picked it up and just went bang, battery in, started using it. I said, oh, what do you reckon about the weight? Not an issue. Didn't, yeah. didn't ever blink. I'll try to use it stronger than us anyway. Uh, much. <laughs> But you can see it's a fairly sizable sort of unit. Yep. Uh, particularly the back here, it's a big. Uh, but you yeah. know that's not the problem. That's not the. Uh, that's not the side that counts. No. You want it to be nice and tidy at the front end. Yes. Um, which it is. Yep. It is a pretty compact gun. Like it's certainly not long in any way. Mm. Um, talking about for to a few guys, I thought that you want a long rack, but as framers, as as tradies, from what I've spoken to so far. They don't necessarily want that long rack because it gets in the way. Same as the other, you, you've probably seen out my uh, 15 and 16 gauge review. Yep, should have, hopefully. Yep, if you're uh, you know, worth your salt, you would have watched those already. <laughs> um, so it works basically the same in that uh, you get an on-off button yep. um, down here under the handle. Yep. And then you've also got your um, uh, switch between um, bump fire and single fire modes. Yeah, the bump fire, that's important because I know that some guys, obviously, if you're running along, a, you know, doing a top plate with your with your stub wall down, you'll want to just bump along. It's incredible. Didn't miss a beat. Again, in the red gum, you would have seen that little footage. Put it on the bump fire. One nail sat up a little bit, more likely user error. Yeah. But the bump fire has worked absolutely perfect. It's quick and easy to flick across. Yeah, and, and you know, that's really important. This thing has so little delay. Yeah. Uh, probably really no delay. There's no ramp up compared to what you're used to with the DeWalt. Okay. It's it's super. You'll hear it. You'll see me just go bang, press the safety down, and there's there's not that lag. Same as the 15 and 16 guys. It's just yep. instant, instant nail delivery. They is... really have hit a home run, I think, with these guns. Yeah. And we've had them, I think it's four months now. Mm -hmm. So this has been pushed a little bit. Uh, when I say pushed, it's been regularly used and there's no little things that have popped up yeah it hasn't put 80 or 100 thousand nails through it yet the important thing to remember with these guns they're that clever now you take it in for servicing these guys can tell how many nails have gone through it all right yeah they, they there's a little jigger inside somewhere or they plug it in somewhere and it'll tell you hey we've done 42,000 nails which is good for you guys to have a bit of backup it's bad if you're going to go in there with an issue and go, oh, I've put through 600,000 nails, and they go, well, actually, you've done 125,000. Yeah. But it, that is good information, and that just shows these smart tools, if you want to call them that. Yeah. They do hold plenty of info. Did you have any jams on this at all? I haven't had a single jam, no. Okay. Uh, in saying that, I haven't had it rocking around in mud and mud and, and, and crap up the front. Yeah. Haven't had any of that. Um, the interesting thing with this is, is I'm pretty sure it's an oil-free nose, but also... There's no regular servicing because you're not having to, yeah. you know, pull the thing apart where you've got the the, the Paslo type fans inside and oiling. Yeah. You don't have that. It's all contained. So I can't get an exact answer on do you have to get it serviced. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a, I don't know, no, no one knows. Yeah, okay. But we'll soon see. Been out a little while now. I'm like, only hearing good things about it. I just ask because, like, I'm, I'm, I haven't used a framer a lot. I'm more sort of familiar with your 15, 16, 18 gauge thumbnails. Yep. And it uh, it doesn't have a quick release. Jam no, a lot the of front. them do have a quick release to open it. That's um, true. I'm not sure if that's maybe just less common on framers. Do they jam less than the smaller nail? They probably would, wouldn't they? Uh, maybe. Yeah, look, you practically would think so, but I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, you gotta get you gotta get your own key out. Yeah, to, I don't uh, think you'll find framers have the quick release at the front. Okay. Maybe a couple of the air ones. Running a bit on memory there, sorry. That's alright. Um, so, 6 amp hour battery, you're going to buy this in a kit with. <laughs> yep. Um, which means you're going to need a lot of nails done. Because yes. battery, battery nails, they don't tend to use a lot of juice. No, you no, can... well, you're, you're relying on the little mechanisms. Yes. It's not, they're not actually creating that force power. Yeah. So, I thought it was about a thousand, so I've set on a few posts it's about a thousand. I believe it's seven to seven eighty okay. um, nails per 6 amp hour. Okay. So, um, look. They're going to bring out a bigger battery pretty soon, so I don't think it'll be long before you're at a thousand nails. But I think for seven hundred plus nails, yeah, I, I don't think that's. How many times would it, would a framer do that? Like a lot more than that in a day. Very oh, often, a framer would very yep. often. So yep. you, you you have the other battery in charge. And Absolutely, you'd be okay yeah. With you. I, I would hazard a guess, and I'm we're on the fly right now with that question. I would hazard a guess that you get a kit as a framer, you might want to hunt around and get yourself a third battery at some point. Do you think so? Yeah. Yeah, because to, to a box of nails, three thousand. Oh, to just... only use half, half a uh, box of nails in a day. I don't think really there's any frame runner use half a box. That's true, but um, the Hitachi charger is oh, lightning. 
That's a gun charger, yes. Does this 6 amp hour battery in 30... Low 30s. Oh, okay. Minutes. So, you, half an hour, you're full again. You're ready to go. And, like, that's a lot of hours to get done in half an hour, probably. That's true. So, you're probably okay. Yep. <laughs> Alright. So, work on that as well. Um, now, <coughs> the one negative that is obvious that I honestly don't know how it got through <laughs> is the rafter hook. Where is it? Where, where'd it go? How can we possibly lose it now? It's a giant. Okay, it's over there, next to the beach, next to the other gun. Uh, this rafter hook is absolutely enormous. Um, we've taken the the what, hook. What is that? Uh, that gap there? 130 mil? No, yeah, probably 120 mil. Yeah. Yeah, it's just enormous, and I can't get anyone to tell me why it would be so big. And the issue is that when you actually hang it on your belt, the gun can actually, with a big raft hook, can actually spin. And then the nose piece is hitting your knee or just below your kneecap. Yeah. So what we've done is we've not retrofit because it wasn't real hard. We pulled the uh, we've pulled the the hook off the fixing gun or the, sorry the C brother. Yeah. And we put it straight onto the framer, and that's what I would consider absolutely standard. Yeah, perfect for so, a thirty-five mil stud. Yeah. So honestly, I think Hitachi need to either provide both or provide a very stuff and good reason as to why this is. <laughs> but even when they provide a really good reason, most guys are going to get no, no. We want this smaller one. So I think put both in for a few bucks. Yeah. Don't get that. Um, it's easy to hang, but then it's actually not all that easy to have in your belt when you've got such a big gap. It's just a and, and like it's just not going to be a stable. No, it's not. No, and that's why hanging off a thirty-five mil stud. It's going to be. Yep. It's going to it be, does sit funny. Uh, yeah. And Jason said straight away. He said if I put it on the heel, if he puts it on the back, mm -hmm. and it spun straight away on it. Yeah. So so that, I think that's actually a, a bit of an issue. Um, there's no not a heap of. Um, Negatives for it. The only other thing that I did find a few times, and then Jason did find, as soon as he went to skew a nail, um, up, anything like that above your head, some nails are a bit finicky, this was perfect. But when you go to skew a nail, um, the actual nose piece is very, very close. The actual safety part, it's really close to the base of the rack. Oh, yeah. So you can't actually get into these funky little tight spaces easy. What I think you're going to find yourself doing is shoving the gun in harder, hitting it in harder and hitting the trigger, which means you're putting extra force on the gun when you shouldn't have to. Maybe to sharpen these little nose pieces a little bit more, or it needs to sit out maybe another 10, 15 mil. Okay. I was thinking to myself that they don't look real sharp. And a lot of the times, they, you know, they've got a bit of grip on them. Yeah. I, at the moment, though, to be honest, if, if they were any sharper and it spins around when you've got it hanging on the side of your nail well, bag, yep. You, you might uh, also all of a sudden have a, a jewellery addition to your kneecap. <laughs> so, um, so look, that's, that's the only other negative, which are a couple of small things, but I think that skew one, a little bit of funkiness, I think that might annoy a few people. The last thing, which is a small thing, but it just bugs the daylights out of me, we would really like Hitachi to put battery indicators on. I cannot believe they don't have it. Yep. I'm going to live in faith that it's going to happen very soon. They're thinking about it, and it's going to be coming, I'm sure. They do have one here. Be stuffed if I can actually work it out half the time because it's just a, a little battery indicator yeah. and it's got a full and a half. Yeah. You don't actually know if you've got 300 nails left to go or if you've got three nails to go. Yeah. So it's only a small thing, but if I had a, a, a four dot indicator here, yeah. I'd know. If I'm down to two and I'm heading up on a roof, I'm changing it or if I'm down to one for sure. One would presume that Hitachi are not going to be that far away as all the other brands are getting on with, with the, uh, the more premium yep. battery cells. Yep. Um, you know, Bosch and Metabo and such are already on it, and yeah. Hitachi own Metabo. Yep. Um, so yep. I presume that they're going to come out with some premium cells for hydro tools. Have to. And I would think that those will come out with, with uh, battery indicators then. Yep. But um, don't know why they haven't done it already. I'm not sure. It's saying that if, if this has been lagged behind a bit because they were producing this beast, mm. I'm very happy. So thank you very much for putting off the indicators. Because <laughs> look, it, it is a fantastic gun. Yeah. Um, it stood the test of time for me. What's the price? As with anything, guys, we've got to wait a while. Uh, the price is $8.49 in Australia for a kit with two 6 amp hour batteries and one of the chargers. Yep. I believe it comes in a sustainer type box. Oh, yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yep. Some guys don't like them. Hey, who cares? Use it as another toolbox. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And I think their warranty is, I think, I'll double check oh, this, but I'm pretty in sure. charge of that. Pretty sure Hitachi's three years on the tool and two on the battery. Okay, he was in charge of that, so if it's wrong, it's going to be annotated right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not feeling very confident anymore. Oh, 
All right, anyway, we're going to wrap up because we may have put you to sleep already. Very, very impressed with Hitachi's gun. Yep. The two brothers that we did recently, which you do need to look at if you haven't seen, they're still going gangbusters. So they're an absolute cracker. I think they've done really well with this. So Hitachi, soon to be Hikoki, mm. um, has hit a home run here. Very, very impressed. Very good. All right, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Please hit like. Check us out on Facebook or Instagram as well. Yeah. Thanks, guys. See ya. See ya.